Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, I'm John, this is many a true nerd, and welcome back to Medieval 2 Total War, where we finally kicked the Portuguese out of Wales. It's odd that's a thing that needed to be done, but it needed to be done. And more importantly, we managed to take Krakow for ourselves, and also, immediately afterwards, engineer a war between the Pope and Hungary. So Hungary now excommunicated, meaning it's now open season on all of their bloody cities. So, I really am so tempted to just go and take Vienna off them. They spent so long trying to take Vienna, but tactically it would be a bad idea because the Hungarians used Vienna as a staging point in which to launch invasions and incursions into the Imperial territory. And the Imperials being kept busy and having to constantly keep bloody Nuremberg really under strength means they don't turn their attention to my relatively soft economic heartland up north. So... Yeah, we'll have to see about that. I don't know. In all fairness, there's plenty of poles around we can take out because they unquestionably are the devil and need to be destroyed and killed and whatever. Speaking of which, we've actually got troops coming in that direction just for that purpose. We've also got the final Russian city under siege over here, but to be honest, I'm just going to wait them out. There's no point going in. Actually, I could do, you know. I've blatantly got enough strength just walk in here. That this is just a... No, not the French diplomat. We know France has got bloody diplomats. It's just a castle. It's just a castle, and up on the walls, they've got... Yeah, on the walls, they're going to have nothing but flipping peasants, woodsmen... Oh, nothing. Nothing. Okay, you know what? Maybe we'll go to them. How much have I actually got left over around here? We've got... Okay, right now we've only got four siege towers. That's not quite enough. I want some rams and a couple more siege towers just in case. Let's just get some backup stuff. Yeah. Next turn, I'll consider actually going in and wiping out the Russians to the last man and dealing with the Russian menace once and for all. That indeed might be fun to do. So we'll see about that next turn. What else do we need to do? Ah, yes, this is actually the same turn I did an awful lot of stuff. Uh, last part was basically all taking place within a single turn because there was a lot to be getting on with over there. And I've not got much money because I've already kind of spent it. Right, the French situation. If I attack you right now, yes indeed, I do actually get these guys backing me up. So, what can I do with you? I feel like I probably just want to chase these guys off, to be honest, because uh, the trebuchets will make life annoying for me when they actually attack the city. Because they'll be able to just take out a bunch of walls. I mean, sure, they've got dismounted noble knights, but we're going to have a lot of crossbow supports. The problem is, we don't have much in the way of actual... No, not you. I need to know what your flipping army is. Hang on. How much cavalry do you have here? Not much. No. You've got one damaged unit of feudals and the general himself. It's not much, is it? No, it's not much at all. Okay, I am going to let them... Okay, I'm going to give one more turn to attack me because I'd rather deal with them outside the walls of Paris itself if I can get away with it. Meanwhile, over here at Angers, uh, which I've renamed to Angers, so you know it's Angers. I run the place now, so I determine how that's pronounced. That's 100% fine. You guys, nothing much you there. Not this town is basically not worth anything, and it's not God. And right now, it's flipping <laughs> It's flipping in the process of rebelling. Nice. Ah, the peasants have also broken the merchants' wharf. Good, it's making no money. Marvellous. There's also Bordeaux over here. Okay, they've got Bordeaux under strength. That's a fortress with a bunch of solid, solid troops in it. So uh, that's going to cause trouble. Also, I like how basically every French settlement now is being spied on. That's very, very good indeed. Zaragoza is a large town. That's not going to do anything. And then Valencia is a castle. That's not going to do anything. If I could just kick France out of, you know, modern day France... I'd consider that a win. I could then just basically put some troops over on the Pyrenees just to make sure Zaragoza doesn't cause trouble. And France could just become basically like a bit of Spain. Now as for the troops at Krakow, I'm going to give them a turn to rest for the time being. I kind of want to see what the Hungarians are going to do next before I start moving them around. Yeah, I think actually we're broadly done with this turn. We just need to see now whether the French decide to attack us at Paris. If they don't soon, I might kind of give up on them and actually just basically start attacking them directly myself. We'll see. We also need to figure out what to do with the Scottish. Though again, that depends on what the Scottish themselves are planning to do next. Arguably, just getting like a single catapult and walking into Dublin and taking it over in a single little kind of strike from the sea when this fleet gets around here, that could potentially be very, very sensible indeed. In fact, speaking of that, do we actually have any siege equipment sitting around anywhere? Ah, we've got one ballista over here. But any chance has anyone ever built a... Yeah, I can just have some more ballistas over here. And we've got a catapult too. 
Marvellous. Okay. I'd say that's everything we flipping need right here in Wales. Nice. Also, I did say last time, yeah, because the Welsh spin failed to retake Wales, Wales wasn't going to be a free independent nation anymore. So, uh, no, this is actually not going to be Wales. I was going to rename it Wales. I genuinely was. This was just going to be renamed Wales the Castle in honour of it being Wales. But no, no, sadly, it is no longer that. Instead, this place will simply be New R House, which is a bit of an insult to the original R House because it's nowhere near as good, but screw it, just don't tell the people in R House about that. Right, time to see who's going where. Most importantly, are the French planning to attack me at this point? Because they've got a, not exactly an insignificant force close by to Dijon, so much like to do something. You guys coming in for an attack? Or are you just going to move around your 10 million diplomats and be happy with that? Nope, first up they want to take care of some rebels, that's fine and understandable, finish those lads off, that's fine. Just slightly soften up that French force there. And indeed a whole bunch of troops falling back towards Valencia, looks like no attempt to actually take Toulouse back, marvellous. Yeah, Dijon is now under strength, little bit on the okay side, but yeah, their territories over here are looking very flimsy. Stop talking to the Russians, alright, they're not going to be around for too much longer, I wouldn't bother. Oh, the Venetians know what's up. Their princesses are finally walking away from Russia. Now, this is very, very interesting. What are the various crusading armies going to actually do at this point? Because, yeah, the Venetians just marched a tiny bit north there, but are they going to try and march back home? Are they going to conquer something else? There's another Venetian army that just wandered off north. Where are you guys going exactly? Because I really hope you're not about to betray me right now. As for the Scottish, what are you guys going to do? I suspect you guys don't have a fleet right now. I think your fleet was destroyed by the Portuguese already. So you don't have one, no. Not much. They're just kind of gathering together their troops around Dublin. Understandable, it's literally their only remaining territory. As for Portugal, who knows? Maybe they want... Wait, are we at war with them right now? Yes, yes we are, because we literally just kicked them out of Wales. And that's totally an army that's going to try and be taken north by the navy. No, not this time. Not this time, you stupid bastards. This time we're going to destroy you at sea before you get the chance. Now, the Hungarians are an interesting faction as well. Spies moving around all over the shop. They've got a princess on the field too. Where are their armies going to go and what are they going to do about all of this? They're not technically at war with Venice right now, I don't think. They're just at war with me and the Pope because Venice didn't get involved. They've got two good armies, but those armies might decide to head, say, against me rather than the Imperials for once. Or maybe their centuries-long war against the Imperials is one they feel more strongly about. Right, some guy's heading over there to reinforce that little crappy army that the Pope just beat up. Also, what's the Pope going to do at this point? That's a good question, because the Pope's army is now just stuck over in Eastern Europe. Like, it will take him literally, I don't know, um, probably 15, 20 turns to make it back to his home territory. So I imagine instead he's just going to find something else to conquer. And he could go after the flipping Hungarians, or he could go after the Polish. <laughs> Either would be fine. Rome itself is probably really vulnerable right now. Oh yeah, he's heading north. Right. The question is, what does he want? Does he want to just take over flipping Polish territory? I hope so. That'd be good. And here come the Mongols. Now, what are you... Okay, they're going north again. Yep. Okay, I think uh, last time maybe I was a bit optimistic when I said, okay, now the days of Mongols bumbling around are done. <laughs> now, now they're going to start marching somewhere. No, it's decided against it. Maybe they want to absolutely feel like they've rejoined those guys over on the right. Then they'll make their decision where they're going next. <laughs> But next turn, next turn, the Mongol horde will definitely start doing something sensible. <laughs> Bloody Mongols. And what have we got? We've got a natural disaster. Oh, we've got plague. Oh, in angers. Dear, oh dear. And the Pope wants me to stop trouble with Portugal. It was not my fault. Seriously, it wasn't. Also, the Council of Nobles wants Inverness in the Empire. I don't know why. They've just decided. Actually, what was the reward for that? Sorry. Um, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on, the... Also, ah, Scotland. Apparently I'm not supposed to be attacking Scotland for four turns. Okay, fine. And you want best units currently available. Okay, seriously, I'm training damn good units down in the Middle East right now. I don't think you're being serious. Hungary and Poland have straight away decided to stop attacking each other. Oh, King Steve, no! Oh, King Steve. Oh, but... King Steve's dying moments were spent doing what he loved, which is inspiring people to have sex more than they would do otherwise, because he got Aleppo up to a citadel. In fact, that's pretty much all he did as faction. Not really fought a single battle, actually as faction leader. 
I think, like, once he was faction leader, the Middle East was pretty peaceful already. I think the only thing he did was travel from town to town with his red-hot, glowing, shining charisma, encouraging everyone to immediately go home and have sex with their significant other. And the birth rate just spiked. There are, across the flipping Middle East, huge numbers of children called Steve. Some, some have suggested scurrilously that Steve himself would go house to house and be so damn charismatic that he would just have sex with woman after woman after woman and there would be hundreds of little Steves dotted around the Middle East. I couldn't possibly comment, but let us simply just say that Steve will be fondly remembered across the Empire, but especially by the women of the Middle East. Right, over in fact announcements, also we've had some merchants and diplomats passing away. Now, oh, King Gustav the Crusader, our new king over in Krakow. Very, very nice indeed, nothing than that. Ah, and Skapti Stanger, his son over in Acres, picked up fine armour. Good for you, Skapti. How are you again? Remind me. Good old... Oh, you're the new flipping factionaire. Oh, uh-oh. <laughs> it's never a good idea to be a factionaire inside my empire, by the way. They get thrown away a lot. Uh, right. Are you any good? Feels unappreciated. Not so important if you're about to be the faction leader. Speaks of loyalty. Again, doesn't matter. Abhors drink. Okay. Not so good. Legacy of chivalry. Good. Oh dear. Unmanly. Minus one authority. Minus one. So, okay, so he's down to minus three morale. Iron fisted. Fiscally challenged. Born to command, which is good, but I don't think so. Oh, dear. Okay. On the absolute plus side, King Steve will not see his son being thrown away deliberately in battle. So that's good. Right, fortress upgrade. We know about Aleppo. Marseille can be a huge city whenever we wish. And Corsica. Actually, Corsica's one I actually do want to do. Because the flipping moors will be back sooner or later. So I wouldn't mind an actual proper fortress over there. Yeah, go on then. Let's get that into production pretty darn soon as well. Though, let's just let that finish off first. Lovely. And also, get these guys retrained too. Nice. Uh, okay. Let's have a little Luxy in the family tree here. <laughs> we might need to do some more... Oh, bloody hell, the enemies list. Oh, my enemies list might have got a little bit out of hand. To be honest. But no fairness, I'm probably like bigger than all of these put together. Like, okay. France has like what? Um, I think France has five territories left. Sicily has, uh, I think only three. Okay, so that's eight. Nine, ten. The Moors have five, fifteen. Egypt has one, sixteen. Portugal has two now, eighteen. Poland gets that up to 21, and Hungary has, I think they've got four, yeah, I think they've got four, uh, so 25, so yeah, quite significantly smaller than me, I think I'm actually on 44 right now, so uh, those of you who know this game well, maybe remembering of course, it's actually 45 cities to technically win the game, of course that won't be the end of the series, because I want to actually like deal with the, the hordes, and there's a bunch of other events that we also want to see. So uh, don't you worry, that will definitely not be the end when we take the next settlement. But uh, oh dear, my enemies list may have got a little bit out of hand, but never mind. Now I'm going to be honest, my alliance with Venice is a little bit on the precarious side, because they are also allied with the Holy Roman Empire, who are technically, technically not at war with me, but actually really, I should probably have a chat with the Holy Roman Empire. Like if I could just deal with the France situation, me and them could become friends. To be honest, admitting my relations are very poor, but I could just spend money and just gift it to them until they liked me again. <laughs> After all my talk at the kind of very first part of, oh, we'll be going to war with the Imperials very soon, it's turn 99 and we haven't yet. <laughs> and at this point, they strike me as the most logical next alliance if I wanted another one. And oh, hello, we've got a flipping traitor. Who was that? Who actually betrayed us over there? It's... Wait, who did betray us? I don't know. Who's betrayed us exactly? And whoever it was, who do they betray as to? And... Right, because presumably if a force of troops betrayed us, then we'd well, see a force of troops belonging to somebody else. And the only person who could have bribed them would be... Salutations, honourable ally. Did the Papal States just bribe someone, then immediately disband them? I'm genuinely not sure. Also, oh, you bastards. Please do something. Come. Come and have a go. We're almost ready for you at this point. You've given us plenty of time to bloody prepare. Marvellous. I mean, I've seen them bumble around before. This is some high-level bumbling, even by the standards of the uh, the flipping Mongols. They've really been doing some top-notch bumbling this time. Right, so. 
Venetians heading north. Papal States also heading north. There's, hang on, where's Barbus the Mad? There's Barbus the Mad. Marvellous. So, you are also heading north, possibly over to Vilnius. If you want to try and take Vilnius, that'd be great. You, my good man, come over here and lay out a watchtower. And you know what? What's even here? Not much. Do I actually want to buy any spare troops? Let's just move over here and see what you do next time. Because there's... Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. These guys, you don't see these guys very often, but they're pretty bloody good. Long-range missiles right there. Oh, sorry, I was confusing the Balkan archers with something else. Uh, yeah, it's the Bulgarian brigands I actually meant. Uh, yeah, these guys are the really damn solid guys. Melee attack 9, missile attack 7, total defense uh, 12. So they can fight in actual fights. They're kind of like Norse archers, but they're long range, which makes them really, really damn good. Sorry, I was misspeaking that the Balkan archers were good. The Balkan archers are not good. The Balkan archers are okay when they're shooting someone in the back, obviously, but basically they are just peasant archers you can just buy dotted around, which is fine. So, and then there's also Slavs who are, yeah, they're basically just like... I think they're the equivalent of town militia rather than spear militia, if I recall correctly. So, uh, the mercenaries in this part of the world aren't great, but you do have some really nice archers, which is cool. Actually, you know what? For flipping 660, I will actually take some of them. And these guys are cheap. That's the nice thing about them. They are super, super cheap. So I'll have two of you guys at so flipping lootly. There we go. And then we'll be ready to... Have you got weirdly pixelated drawings? You do as well. That's kind of odd. I'm not quite sure why those are so pixelated next to everyone else. But whatever. Bad luck, I suppose. Right. We will attack Yassi next turn. And that'll actually give us a castle down in this part of the world. Very close by to some Hungarian territory. Just to put some extra pressure on them. Budapest is relatively well protected right now. Vienna's not. Vienna is vulnerable. But there's two big Hungarian armies. I'd rather they went north and attacked the Imperials. So I'm not going to actually provoke the Hungarians right now. Because if they go up there right now, they might finally, finally take Nuremberg. And I'm going to be honest. Even after everything the Hungarians have done and everything I've now done to them, I'd still kind of be glad for them. I'd feel really happy for them if they finally took Nuremberg. Because it's kind of clearly been the centre of government policy for the past few centuries that they want to take Nuremberg. So go on, you mad bastards. Why not give it a go? And still no troops that I can train at Krakow. So unsurprising, fine. I'll take another turn before they start reappearing inside the recruitment pool there. Lovely. Everything seems under control for the time being. <laughs> You're still there. At some point, you'll die of old age. Maybe I'll just let this guy die of old age, quite frankly. In fact, actually, you know what? Let's just go and take him out. I've got the troops for it. Right, you up there. Take him on and clear victory. Good. That's him taken out. You guys get up there. Nice. That makes you... Hang on. That makes you a better commander. Very good. Frederick the Crusader. Get back in Milan. Retrain all the troops that just died doing that. Because apparently he had quite the army on him. Marseille, we know, can go up to a huge stone wall and pick up some dock lands. How much is its trade making right now? Less than 2,000. Okay, but not spectacular, to be honest. Maybe we'll just leave them be, just for the time being. And I'll put them up to a normal tax rate as well. Might need to lower that again for the French and spy in that direction. But hopefully, the French are a bit too busy, you know, dying and failing otherwise. So who are you exactly? There's a bunch of just uh, generals. There you are. There's King Henry the Watcher again. Ah, he went into the city. We can now see what's actually going on here. He's a, uh, ooh, hypochondriac. Okay, killing him might be fun. Also disgusted by blood. How on earth have you got this much authority when you're disgusted by blood minus two authority? And minus one authority, slave to superstition. Hang the flip on here. Ignorant, minus one. Yeah, this is the guy. This is the guy, he's just... How on earth is he- wait a second. I think the game's made a mistake here. Possibly this is a case as occurred in some games some of the time, where if you end up with a sufficiently low minus number, it kind of swaps back over to a high number. Because this guy should have a minus authority. Absolutely flipping lootly he should. Okay, so hang on. So plus one, convincing. Okay, up to plus three from perfect politician. Up to plus five from faction leader. Up to plus six from Strict Ruler. Back to plus five from Ignorance. Back to plus six from Marks of War. But then Slave to Superstition should go to plus four. Disgusted by Blood, down to plus two. And that's it. That's your lot, because Hypochondriac doesn't impact authority. So he literally shouldn't have five. Why do you have five? The game is simply calculating that number wrong. That's really annoying.
Right, moving up on Yassi, and ah uh, yes, one of the things I did say I wanted to do, I would say I actually want to move in and take out this massive Russian castle full of a large number of quite flimsy troops. I'm going in. I'm just going in because it's going to be funny to just head in there and kill those guys off. And that will be the end of the Russians. And technically, I believe, hang on, we are indeed, yep, we are at 44. We do hold Jerusalem. That will actually technically be the long campaign victory condition met. But of course, as I say, we do actually want to clear out the uh, the Mongols and also do a few other little bits and pieces. Because there's a bunch of special events to show up in this game. So we definitely want to show off them before we wrap this up. So, uh, all right, Russians, <laughs> me and you. We've been doing this for a long, long time. It's finally time to wrap things up here. Now, my own general's got scarred, which is nice. Plus four to general's hit points. Very, very good indeed. Other than that, nothing major, to be honest. No changes on the morale front. You, meanwhile, you are being led by the prince over here. Anything good that we need to know about with you? Dauntless, which is nice. Drillmaster, which kind of counteracts that a little bit. Nothing major, noble in battle, air apparent, ignorant, no. Okay, fine. This is a pretty even fight, all things considered, but I'm definitely bringing the better troops. And bear in mind, the peasants are here. The peasants of Peasants Twerp, who have been here through the entire Russian campaign, are of course here for the end. Because how could they not be? And we've got a surprisingly pleasant sunny day for it here as well. So, literally all of these guys are all going to be tucked away inside this castle right here. All we need to do really is take the walls. I just need to basically pretty much move my uh, just huge numbers of siege towers up. That'll be absolutely fine. Don't worry about the rams. We may as well get the ram kind of up to the wall while everything's distracted. For the most part, it shouldn't be a big deal. Also, we need to figure out how much space there is because uh, there's simply not that much space to bring uh, the towers to the wall. So uh, I can bring three around here. That's fine. But then I need one here and then two around here. All right, that's absolutely fine. Uh, just make sure all my best troops are on the towers. Yes, indeed, it's basically all dismounted Huskars. That's absolutely A-OK. -okay. So, you, and then you, and then there's going to be one around here. That's going to be you. So that's those three in those positions. That's fine. And then we've also got around here, we're going to have... Who's the best, lads? You have got one experience, so we're going to bring you up to here. And then we need to bring you to here. And you, you're a little bit on the damage side. So we'll bring you to here. No, that's a flipping uh, that's a flipping ladder. But that's fine too. Ladders are allowed to take part, damn it. And then these guys around here. That should be more than a flipping enough to basically take the walls. Because the infantry they do have is flimsy as anything. But just in case, let's just have some backup in the form of some ladders that can come round to here. Just as you know, to make absolutely flipping sure. Right. Start the battle. Now this is going to be interesting. Because they have got enough troops to be... They've started some guys outside. Did you mean to do that? I think they didn't. I think the game's accidentally spawned some of those guys outside. Didn't really mean to. Fine, don't worry about that. Instead, you just head over there and go round here. Now you three... Over to the walls. We have got vastly the superior troops here. The only thing they've got that's good is cavalry. And cavalry are not very good at going up on the walls. So that'll be absolutely fine. We have got an awful flipping lot of troops backing us up here. In fact, actually, you guys. You go over there and you go over here. I want everyone kind of popping out of their towers at the same time. That'll be absolutely flipping fine. And actually, there's a weirdly not large amount on the walls. I was expecting them to try and hold the walls, but no. They've actually decided to keep a fair bit of their infantry. Wait, where is where are the troops? They should have more troops than this. They had like a full stack in here. Not a great stack, but where's everyone? They should totally have more than this. I mean, I guess they've got some stuff on the... All right, fine. <laughs> Whatever, I'm not going to complain. Um, I feel like they should have more than what they've got right now, but they appear to not do so. They've not even got, like, all the towers on the front opened up. Sure, they've got a few kind of basic towers firing in, but we've got, yes, yeah, six siege towers and also two ladders backing them up coming in as well. I may as well get the 
Yeah, you know what? You guys just start heading up. By the time they actually get over there in range of that tower over there, hopefully, then these towers will no longer be in possession of the Russians. Because once this fight actually begins, this shouldn't be too much trouble. What they can do, however, is set fire to some of my towers. Unquestionably, we're going to lose the odd tower, and they will do some damage to me as I try and come up here. Ah! They're sending out General's bodyguards. Okay, that's intriguing. Uh, in which case... Hmm... I haven't actually got much in the way of spearmen. That is unquestionably the weakness of this force. Right, you two, leave that be and start heading up there. And I don't have much in the way of heavy cavalry either, actually. Ooh, okay, right. Norse archers, start heading up, because if need be, you can absolutely flip and fight, all right? So your job is to get up there and just start peppering the general's bodyguard. So just get over there and skirmish mode off, please. You are potentially in fighting mode because you're actually better fighters than some of my actual troops on the field here. Now, where do these guys actually want to go? This is fascinating. <laughs> okay, on the plus side, these three guys have made up this. Ah, gosh darn it. That's unlucky. Right, that's caught fire. Uh, these guys just need to basically run over here because they can join up with a different siege tower down line. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Get over here. Get over and join the ballista. You guys have caught fire as well. Go and join up with this fight as well. Get over to the ballista fight over there. Why the flip not, eh? These guys are under control. Yeah, we've lost two to fire. That's not the worst thing in the world. Oh, gosh, darn it. We've lost another one. That's a lot. Okay, don't climb. Instead, you just basically try and fight these guys if you can. Right, so we've lost three to five. They had a lot of archers. I guess that was the one thing they did have going for them. So that's... Oh, has that caught fire as well? Oh, bloody hell. No, guys, guys, guys. Stop it. Stop it. Do not try and... Okay, try and take that out. Okay. We've lost, like, four towers in very rapid succession, and I don't like that. As long as we've got some way to get up onto the city... It's fine. These guys are going to do an excellent job just basically smashing these guys. I want to get my own leader over here to help out, please. Just get my general over there. That's caught fire now. Bloody hell. Right, okay. You guys get over there and help out against the general's bodyguard, I flipping guess. You guys get round here and as soon as you can start firing on him. Actually, you know what? Screw it. You guys, fire on these guys. You've got a nice clear line at those guys right now. So just turn and shoot. Lovely. We've lost... Have we lost all but one tower? Yeah, we've lost all but one tower right now. Bloody hell. And the ladders, meanwhile, have been... Yeah, they've been taken out by these lads, which is a concern. And you're badly damaged. You guys, get over here and help the bloody hell out. Those guys are now fleeing. You guys get over here and help out with the general. This is going much worse than I anticipated. But, hopefully, these lads up here, these Viking raiders, you will tear apart peasant archers. No problem at all. Right. You guys, get over here. We might just be able to push in the front door by chasing them as they actually flee inside the city. But not if they're going to use all their cavalry to hold us back. This is actually their best flipping chance. Okay, this is a concern. Right here, this is a concern. Get onto the peasants here. Just push through them. Peasants will collapse very, very easily if you just basically push straight through them. Now, I need to clear out the general from this spot. You need to get over there and help out. Why are you not helping out already? Bloody hell. Right. You guys need to ideally get up on the walls. Uh, get over here. You lot also help out. Just get in there and actually fight hand to hand. That's the yeah. That's the general's bodyguard down at 36 at the time being. Those are peasants, but they're keeping the towers on. You guys push forward. I need those peasants. How are the peasants doing? How are they still at 133? Oh bloody hell! They've got magic peasants of their own. Oh, that's the problem. They've got their own flipping leader. Right, you need to get out of there because I don't want you stuck in a protracted melee. Right, you guys put that down. We now need the reinforcements. Get in there. Get the flip in there, okay? Now, all of you guys need to take out the actual... The weird glitching general's bodyguard. All of you, I want to focus all your firepower over there, please. Right. My guy backs off over here. I want him away from the towers, please. More cavalry just fleeing over in this direction for no well-explained reason. Archers can knacker that guy because there's... there's Apparently, there's 59 of them. All right, fine, whatever. Their king will be in trouble soon. Uh, you guys... Reposition yourselves over here and you'll have a shot at the side of the general's bodyguard and that will help. I think we've just killed one of their leaders, which is good. Yes, the prince is indeed dead. I think there were like multiple princes in there. Right, you guys are now just pushing your way inside. 
You've already dealt with the majority of their strength. This has gone as well for the Russians as they could really have ever hoped for. And their leader is broken. Good. He's now going to try and retreat directly through these lads. So, four of him left at this point and... Wait, what? Where did... Okay, that's interesting. You guys, get on the flipping ladders and get them back on the walls, please. All right, seriously. Also, how did the... Uh-oh. Okay, you guys broke and backed off. We don't even have a position on the walls right now. We've lost all our flipping towers. That is... That is no good at all. But we've got enough troops at the front door just basically desperately trying to push in. Wait, is that the generals? How many generals do you have? Seriously. Stop it. Right, just keep pushing. This is the scruffiest city siege I've ever had, but screw it, it'll work. Right, you guys need to... Are you over here now? Yeah. Get over here. There's now peasants, 137. I think you can handle peasants. You guys, get around here and join up. Oh, bloody hell, we've got... Wait, why have you not pushed that up to there? Get on the siege tower. Get up on the flipping walls, you stupid bastards. Oh, flipping dear. Right, well, we can take out those peasants. Those are just some ballista that don't actually have a, like, you know, ballista or anything. There's the main general, I think. But their cavalry's done. There he goes. Finally. I think that's like the third or fourth leader or something we've taken down. Actually, it looks like it's just the second. There's another one. But I think actually the faction leader is not dead yet, uh, which is good. And now, okay, good. And with him gone, we can now just basically slam straight in through. Focus on these here peasant archers. Just smash them down. They're now standing in our bloody way. The Russians have done an excellent job just holding us in position in front of the gates, but they've made the mistake that these towers were never active. If both of these towers had been active, they'd done a lot more damage to us. So now they've got... This area's being held by peasant archers right now. You are... Apparently you're under attack, so maybe back off from wherever the bloody hell you are. Um, you need to get over to these walls because you never bloody did. These guys, 83 of them, are now going to get over the walls here and start... These guys have immediately broken. Nice. All right, chop them down. Chop them the hell down. Suddenly, there's a lot of indirect fire coming on this giant pile of troops. That's okay. Ah, it's coming from bloody over there. Right, I need... Somebody needs to get round over to there. What are you guys? You guys are just scouts. Screw it. Bring them up. Why the bloody hell not? Right, you guys, get round here... And climb the walls and actually fight hand to hand. Because that's what we're doing now, apparently. Uh, now, what's all this at this point? You guys... Okay, you're breaking. So, some of their missile cavalry is collapsing. That's ballista. But they don't have a ballista. They lost their ballista. I think it's stuck outside or something. These guys now need to... Okay, one of you needs to go over there and take out those peasant archers. One of you needs to take out these peasant archers. The rest of you need to hang back. Actually, you know what? The rest of you need to focus on these two peasant archers, because they're going to fire on us sooner or later. And after that, what's bloody left? Yeah, pretty much, the Russians did an excellent job. Like, that's the most sensible thing they could have done. Basically, just try and take... Actually, they got really lucky. They got stupidly lucky that with just peasant archers, I suppose a lot of peasant archers, they did take out, like, five out of our six actual towers, which is a ludicrously big number, but whatever. Right, and you are... You're just peasants up there. That's fine. Probably, you guys, get down and chase down those lads. But at this point, we've got the gates pretty well secured, which is nice. We've got a bunch of cavalry. They should probably just come into the city ready to chase down whatever breaks. These guys are now around here. We've got... Hang on. Where did that 97 come from? Okay, we've just got 97 Viking raiders, but screw it. Go for the peasant archers. What's left on the plastics? Because that's it at this point. Ballista. Peasant archers. Peasants. Woodsmen. Remnants of a general's bodyguard, but with no actual general associated, and 20 heavy cavalry. Okay, at this point, probably, lads, we just start moving forward, but we've taken a hell of a few knocks doing this, haven't we? Dear, oh, flipping dear. Right, these guys are now badly damaged. I don't want to send them forward. They'll probably bloody break. Uh, right, Norse archers. Norse archers, get in the city, because why the bloody hell not, eh? Right, you guys round here, you guys round here. Screw it, you can take out flipping 20 heavy cavalry by yourselves, I'm sure you can. Uh, one of you guys, see off these lot, make sure they don't actually manage to get away, please. And then you, get into the back of these lads, and they probably just got to charge in if we're unlucky. But just start chopping them down, make sure we cut off their retreat, that's more of their heavy cavalry gone. Ballista, ballista, nothing major. You guys should be... Hang on, why aren't you guys... Okay, you guys should be down off the walls by now. Ah, there's these guys. Right. 
So now, these dismantled tusk guards are just basically coming over here and doing some lovely, lovely chopping. So they're just going to chop through these guys, and they're going to do a good bunch of work. There's Viking Raiders chasing these bastards down. Very, very nice indeed. Right, get into the side of the heavy cavalry, just finish those guys off. Once they're dead, that's pretty much your lot. And now we've got a bunch of scruffy infantry. But screw it, it should be enough to actually just cut through. Hopefully, anyway. Let's just get the Norse archers up here. Remember, they're a decent fighting force all by themselves. And don't let these guys get back to the plaza, please. Chop them all down. Nice, well done. Now you can proceed to the plaza. Thank you. Ah, and they're actually far enough back that they've got these flipping towers activated. Bloody bastards. Right. Get the flipping Norse archers up here. We may as well have them flipping firing if they can. And if possible, draw these guys forward because, yeah, we need to pull them away from the towers because they're doing even more flipping damage to us. We're going to win this. It's just a question of how many casualties we've got because we've lost, we've lost nearly half our army. And we had the vastly superior army. It's just, yeah, when you're trying to take a castle and all your siege equipment just happens to burn down, that's just really, really poor bloody luck. Right, round here. You guys, get over here. Yeah, there we are. Pull these guys forward. Ah, and with those peasants pulled forward, now the towers are off. Perfect. Now we've just got a great big scruffy front line here, but now it's peasants versus actual dismounted huskars, and these guys will be shredded nice. And one of my lads has actually broken, you flipping cowards. Come on, guys. We had this in the bag. I know it was a bit dicey, but it was fine. It's absolutely flipping fine. You, all right, get over there and replace your shamed brothers and take out these bastards. Ah, woodsmen. Okay, woodsmen are scary. I'm not going to deny, woodsmen are a little bit on the scary side. They're very bloody powerful with their massive great axes. That is true. Luckily, we have got plenty of archer support over here. How many is actually left? You guys around here. That's peasants. That's peasants. How many woodsmen are left? Because you have woodsmen are the scary bit. And there's... I think just one unit over there. There's one unit of woodsmen right here that my Viking Raiders are taking on. So my Viking Raiders will probably take some significant casualties over there, but... Oh, this is how decided to get into the city, was it? All right, fine, whatever. And slowly but surely, with the inevitability of the tide, yes, my professionalised troops in a straight-up slugging match will absolutely always beat one-on-one -on -one crappy units like little peasants and whatever. They, at this point, are just being chopped down like crazy. Unquestionably, the dying frenzy of these guys has meant they've done better than they should have done. But screw it, I think we've done pretty darn well here. These guys are almost dead, down to the last six. Then we can swing in, take out the missile cavalry, and then just close the trap on the woodsman over there, because that's the last force that's in any way effective. And in we go to chop down those guys. Down one goes, down the other. And now just close the trap on it. There we are, the woodsman. Now just close the trap on them, get behind them. That's a woodsman right over there. And now surrounded, chopped in the back. They will go down very, very quickly indeed. Lovely. Lovely, lovely, lovely indeed. Marvellous. In fact, I think the last thing standing is indeed these woodsmen. And continue the battle. Wait, hang on, what? Hang on, there's something alive over here. What's alive over here? There's... Ah! There's one routing ballista who's trapped literally inside his own ballista. Well, that's... That's intriguing. And also, one of my archers is trying to take him out. Bless him. You know what? I think you get to be the one survivor. Well done. You are the last true Russian. All civilized peoples will be awed by the victory we have won here today. I don't think they will. It was scruffy as balls, to be perfectly honest. Like, yeah, they got almost as many kills as us, which is embarrassing given they were mainly peasants and archers. But that's just the strength of a castle if your siege equipment happens to be taken out by huge amounts of flaming arrows. And with that, a bunch of really exciting stuff is about to happen. Because that's the end of the Russians, but that's not all. Ah, but first we need to decide what to do with the place. You know what, we're just going to occupy it. Let's end on a high note here, a note of mercy. And I have won this game. All your people celebrate this victory. Would you like to continue and gain even greater glory? Yes, I would. Also, we're all going to set off fireworks, despite the fact they haven't been invented yet. Well, in this part of the world anyway. Congratulations, almighty king. With courage and strength unmatched, you have forged a glorious empire, which spans the known world and beyond. And from your blessed throne, all history does unfold. Yeah, the fact you just said the known world and beyond also... 
the game's assuming it's going to take you longer than 99 turns uh, to win the long campaign victory. Because, uh, yeah, we're going to discover a little bit more of the world yet. Uh, but it hasn't happened. So, unfortunately, the game uh, kind of, yeah, got a bit ahead of itself there. Because uh, the gunpowder and whatever we'd need to make those fireworks doesn't exist in Europe yet. And beyond the edge of the known world, the game mentioned also hasn't been discovered yet. But, uh, Never mind. Apparently, that's quite a quick victory. I could have done a lot faster, but never mind, eh? And that is also, I believe, uh, the end of the Russians. Nice. And uh, when you destroy a faction, by the way, I'm not sure if I actually bothered to uh, point this out. Yeah, you get 15% glory in all your settlements for a few turns, which is very, very nice indeed. And this place was long overdue for a fortress. It's just the Russians never flipping bothered. So go on then. Let's upgrade it to a fortress so we've got a nice fortress at the edge of the world here. And with that, we've got a beautiful, beautiful, big red empire. Gotta like that. That's very, very flipping nice indeed. Now, as for France, okay, they seem to be not interested in attacking because they're not building new siege equipment. So, in which case, I think we just need to go and deal with these bastards. So, before we do that, anything major there? Fair and rule, winning first, traits to our people, whoever that guy was exactly. <laughs> I don't know who that was. There might be, I mean, you're still working for me, so it wasn't you. So, someone apparently is a traitor, I just don't know bloody who. Right. France away from Paris, because obviously that's a really damn obvious Danish territory. Yeah, all you really need to do is take out the amount of noble knights and disable the trebuchets, and other than that, it's just nothing. I probably should have done this before. I just kind of want to do it as a city siege, because uh, defending against a city attack is really fun. It's really cool to watch, and we barely did any of it in my Rome 1 playthrough, because generally sallying was the better option. But in Medieval 2, actually defending is the better option, which is why we've kind of done a lot more of that, and it's just more fun to watch. But screw it, we'll just deal with this in the open field if that's what we have to do. And there's a massive great farm in my way. <laughs> well, that's fine. We'll just be over here and everything will be okay. Now let's see what's going on here. Yep, there we are. There's all the flipping reinforcements. I imagine the French will probably give up at some point because they probably don't want to do this. And if we're sufficiently far back, if they decide they do want to march over to us, the trebuchets will totally get stuck behind. So in comes my great big army. Admittedly it's... Ah! They've also been screwed over by a farm, because they've spawned behind a farm, meaning they don't need to walk around the farm to actually flipping get to me. So that's fun. So it's actually going to be a while before they even join the flipping battle. In fact, this is getting a little bit on the worrying side, because I don't want to give up the high ground, but it's taking them a bloody long time to get into the battle. So... Where's the trebuchets? Are they in range yet? No, it's fine. Oh, the trebuchets are in range, but they're using the flaming bolts. Okay, that's going to take them a while to actually land a hit, if they do at all. And my crossbowmen and archers have the range on the mercenary crossbowmen. So that's fine. We're going to do a fair bit of damage to those guys, and they're shooting uphill. But really, as soon as I can, I want to turn my attention to something else. Right, let's get the funeral lights out of there. The first funeral lights have actually arrived from these guys into the battle as well. Right, let's get them joined up as well. Because I need to get you guys around here. In come all the flaming attacks. Miss, miss, miss. Yeah, that's kind of what flaming attacks do. <laughs> flaming attacks are generally not a good idea. Unless you want to go for a complete crazy gamble. Like I did that one time against the Moors. Where it worked really nicely. But trebuchets at long range. You just can't rely on them. Now, thundering down the hill. Lancers flipping down. Let's get these guys sent on their flipping way, please. Uh, shot in the back. And then charged into as well. Hopefully that. Yep, they've already broken. Fine. Let's get out of here. Uh, and then we've got more. Oh, did you just get a lucky hit against these guys? No, not quite. But you came bloody close. Right. You guys and you guys. I want you two drawn up next to each other. I want you guys thundering down the hill, please. We've got ourselves. Yep, the dismounted nobles. Everyone, focus your fire on them, please. Trebuchets right at the back are not going to be doing that much to us unless they get lucky. That one almost got lucky. Right, you guys, forward a bit, please. We need you ready to charge at those guys. That's mercenary Frankish knights. I think they just hit their own troops. Right, good. Good, good, good. And they don't want to attack me. Actually, you know what? I'll screw it. They're using their own cavalry to screen, which is quite clever. Right, you guys, get over there. Okay, everyone's actually now involved in the fight. Okay. Everyone, just basically just charge forward. Get over here as quick as you can. Because right now, this is not a great... Actually, you know what? We can we can totally surround these guys. Screw it. Get around the side of them. They're not going to like being surrounded by superior troops. Not in the flipping slightest. Right, you guys are... Okay, they're in skirmish mode anyway, which is probably a sensible idea. Right, Norse swordsmen cannot stand up to dismount noble knights. Not a flipping chance, but if I now turn these guys off skirmish mode, they might be able to. Right, you guys. Oh, dear. No, back, 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 back. Okay, screw it. Fight there. 
You guys, meanwhile, need to shoot them in the back. The only way they win this fight now is you've broken immediately. Well, that doesn't help me. Right, Norse archers. Fire into the side of these guys. Oh, I wasn't expecting. I thought you'd stand and fight at least for like, you know, a couple of minutes or something. Those guys are badly damaged. You need to fire over here. You need to fire over here. We might be able to skirmish effectively with these lads. These lads haven't broken yet. Oh, bloody hell. These guys need to... Right. Send in the named leader to back off. You need to back off, by the way. Sorry, I forgot you went in skirmish mode. Actually, you know what? Screw it. Stand and fight. Stand and fight. Do it. There you go. Right. Do you guys want to get involved at this point? No. You guys want to... Skirmish mode off for you, please. Just fire over there. You guys, fire over there. You guys, get over there. Why the bloody hell not, eh? In we go, and now with a great big charge from our leader, that will hopefully be enough to cause a bit of a... Not quite a mass route, but... Oh, we've taken a lot of Fusional Knight damage. Ah, that's fine. We can send them back up to Iron Einstein, and that'll be fine. You guys, just keep moving forward. And these guys are now pretty much on the surrounded side. Good, good, good. Norse Swordsmen finally doing their bloody jobs. Oh, you're taking a lot of damage. Hang on. Where are you? Where have you got yourselves caught? Ah, You've got yourselves caught where I don't want you to be. Oh, please don't die, whoever you are. I think you were quite good. Uh, back out, back out, back out, back out. Get the king out of there. Oh, he's being flipping hit by bloody artillery too. Right, where are you? Fuel the lights. Get over to the mercenary crossbowmen and then chase them out of there. You guys, get on this mount of feudals over there. Lovely. And now you guys... This is kind of chaos, actually. Um, just fire over there. Now, you guys, what are you? Oh, you're peasants. Oh, bloody hell. Uh, peasants can probably do a decent enough job. I can... Actually, you know what? Screw it. Just get down on the trebuchet. Ignore the bloody peasants. Peasants don't matter. Uh, you guys need to get round the back here. Oh, no! Has thrown his life away. Oh, no, he hasn't thrown his life away. He just got hit with a completely random thing, I think. Wait, was that... Was that? No, that was. Wait, that was. Oh, that was Captain Carl. That was Captain Carl. It wasn't my general. <laughs> Excellent, right, guys. You shoot these guys in the back. You charge in the back. Just, just get them surrounded. That will cause them to break. Oh bloody hell! Right, and now that was probably the last shot they'll ever fire. Oh, thank goodness that wasn't my general. Wasn't my general. It was just some random guy who was the acting captain. Oh, I'm so sorry. You magnificent bastard. You did your best. You did your flipping best. Uh, what's that down there? That's dismantled noble knights who are running away. I'm just going to send you guys after them. This is a scruffy as balls battle, but it'll do the flipping job. I mean, these guys are just... You can see how they just refuse to bloody break. Even while being shot in the back with crossbows and surrounded on all sides by troops specifically designed to take them out. They just stand and fight. Bloody hell. Right. You know what? I'm happy with that. Actually, no. No, I'm not. I want the trebuchets down. The trebuchets, I want to capture all of them and make sure they don't come back. I want the trebuchets done. Bare minimum. And I think that might be the last member of the trebuchet dead right there. Good. Those guys were bloody annoying and nearly took out my leader. Fortunately, ooh, scruffy. Scruffy, scruffy fight, unfortunately, caused by a couple of unfortunate circumstances. But still, in the end, pretty clear victory for me. This is a clear victory that goes to only men of great virtue and valor. Yeah, but you shouldn't really be losing 300 men when you more than double outnumber the enemy. That was scruffy on my part. And obviously these guys are getting executed. I'm not having those trebuchets surviving, please. Thank you. Ah, hello. We've got a new guy here, Captain Ulrich. Dauntless, very loyal, noble in battle. Oh, yes, my good man. All right, well done. Admittedly... Feels a bit harsh to promote him, given the guy who actually led the battle was killed during it. You presumably didn't actually do anything, but whatever, I guess. Uh, speaking of which, you need to take your troops back over to... Uh, actually, we can take you over to uh, to Cannes, can't we? Yeah, you can just go there and retrain your troops there. Marvellous. Right, so he's now got a decent force at Cannes and could theoretically move on to take out one of the other French towns. That would be very, very nice indeed. You, however, can nip back into Paris because you are, you know, militia troops, so that'll be fine. Paris, meanwhile... Oh, poor Paris has taken a lot of knocks. Right, we need to start merging some people together here. Also, when you're merging inside a city, it goes nuts because the game keeps changing its mind which troops are or aren't the free upkeep units. So expect to see units just, like, skipping all over the place and it not making any sense whatsoever. 
As for the actual military troops, though, yeah, you guys can also head over to... Actually, you head back over to Iron Einstein in order to get retrained there. Lovely. So now that's all done. These guys have been rearranged fairly well. Actually, no, sorry. The guys who are all 90 need to be moved around as well in the most confusing fashion we can come up with. There we go. That's more like it now. You get retrained and... You get re apparently I don't have sufficient troops to train. Oh, I don't have sufficient money to train those. All right, fine. We spent literally all of the money. Damn it. Also, ah, we've got a assassin here. Hello, we've got ah priest. Twenty four percent chance of killing the faction leader. That's not great. That's ooh seventy three percent chance there. Go for it. Come on. Oh, it's the old hidden behind the door thing. Close that door nice and slowly. Knife in the back. Very, very nice indeed. That's another French general right down. And our new faction leader is presumably, yes, not quite so noble and rule. Actually, we should have a look at him. Let's see if the game's managed to miscalculate his authority in our favour. No, obviously his authority is just terrible. It's only the AI that gets to blatantly bloody cheat. You know what? He's fine. He's a really good crusader. He's got tons of flipping chivalry. He'll do the job. What we do need to do is send him around, because he can now handle mop-up operations against the Polish. I think that's that's okay, isn't it? It's only the... Hang on, it's the Portuguese... Yeah, it's Portuguese and Scotch are not allowed to attack. Polish are fair game, they're still excommunicated, of course they are. So that's absolutely fine. You're ready to move against Yassi next turn, and then I'd say probably our Crusader Lord needs to head over to one of the remaining Polish territories and take them out, because the Poles are nearly done. And if we take out the remaining Poles, then we'll have a beautiful, massive red empire stretching oh so far into Europe. It's like a Soviet dream. It'll be marvellous. Uh, and also, I wouldn't mind taking some of these territories ultimately once the Mongols are gone, because I'd like to join up my Russian territories with my Middle Eastern territories and have like an actual connected empire where if you wanted to, you could ride from one side of it to the other, with the exception of Corsica, in which case you will need a boat. But that's acceptable. When technology advances sufficiently, we'll build a bridge like here. Right, meanwhile, we've got a traffic jam of retraining to do around Thorn. But for the time being, we don't have the money to flipping do it, unfortunately. So we'll have to leave that for next turn, where we can keep another eye. And yeah, what exactly are the Venetians and the Papal States planning to do next? Because it's going to take them a while, because these guys, well, especially the Papal States, they've got a catapult. So uh, it's going to be very slow movement for them for a while, but... It would indeed be nice if they were planning to do some of the Polish conquest. Like, you know what? If the Papal States want to extend their empire of three, of course, while I've never actually bothered going to... Actually, I should go and see. You know what? Screw it. I'm going to send this guy round here just to go and, you know, see and therefore update the map that Naples actually belongs to the, uh, the Papal State. They own, like, most of Italy, and also they'll own a tiny bit of, like, Poland for some reason. Screw it. Why not? That'll be fun. And don't forget, by the way, that my new little fleet needs to move in this direction. Uh, you're, uh, yeah, you're Eric, and you've actually got some good stuff here. Uh, you guys, join up with Eric, please. And you guys can as well. Right, you need to move over here. And there we've got some of the Portuguese fleet in sight. Don't want to take it on. Oh! Okay. No, don't get yourself excommunicated by attacking Poland. Though I feel like they should be under orders not to attack me either, quite frankly. Instead, just... Yeah, you can't join up with anything, can you? Oh, no, you can. Oh, bloody hell. The system of admirals in this game is very confusing sometimes. How, when there's two admirals, the fleets refuse to merge. As opposed to just say, you know, the better admiral becoming the admiral and the lesser admiral being retired, but whatever. Right. With literally one gold to my name, I suspect that's all I can do this turn. So... Time to see where, yeah, the Venetians, the Papal States, and indeed the Mongols too, having finally reunited, do they have a new target in mind by now? Well, the French have kicked out one of my spies, unfortunately. That's not a good start. But at least Paris is back under my control. That's nice too. And if the French spy wants to go check out Toulouse, he's more than welcome to. He causes much less trouble there than at Marseille. French forces fall back over to their little town there. No problem at all. Nothing there we couldn't deal with if we desperately wanted to. And indeed, more so fine. The French have kind of given up trying to take back any of their territory. At this point, they're just falling back a lot. And I think that was one of their fleets also putting Corsica under siege. That's okay. We should be able to break out of that pretty easily. Right, no major action from the French at all. As for the Imperials, probably continuing their... Ooh, that was a bit of an aggressive move there. As was that, actually. You don't see Imperial troops leaving northern Italy. Generally, it just builds an army there and just keeps it bumbling around. 
Right. Are the Imperials thinking about something? If it is, it's not really in my direction. So, uh, what are you planning exactly? This is all very interesting. Yes. Venetian armies that were involved in the Crusade continue to just head north. But again, not sure what the destination is. Like, if they were planning to backstab me, no, they're not. Okay, they... No, they're still not. Okay, good. Good, good, good. It's fine. Scottish want to come and have a word, but do not want to offer peace. That's A-OK. -okay. Moors... Ooh. Moors might want peace. Having noticed that Corsica's on its way to being built into a fortress. No. No, not good enough. Still not bloody good enough. As for the Turks, honestly, if they started ruling out the Mongols as a flipping rumour, I wouldn't blame them at this point. And Portuguese just merging their fleets together. They've probably still got more naval power than me at the minute, but with some repairs and a few more, we should be able to handle it. Forces heading down south. Hungarian assassin heads over towards Krakow. Ooh, you're having a swing at my king? You're very unlikely to succeed, but you're a bastard for even trying. And a spy coming over there too. Fine. The Hungarians, potentially we need to issue an assassin just to deal with their assassins. Because I'm concerned about their assassins having a go at my king. Like, sure, it's probably like a 15% chance to succeed, but still, that's still concerning. We need to not let them get lucky with that, because eventually, they might succeed if they just keep sending assassins over and over. Sooner or later, they will. Right, Hungarian forces drawing up over here, trying to protect the mountain pass that leads to their capital. Understandable. But still not doing anything with those big forces hanging out near Vienna, best as I can tell. No, nope, not doing a thing. Another Papal States diplomat, who possibly bribed one of mine for no well-explained reason, is now just naffing off into Turkey. As for your army, however, ah, looping back round down to the road. Possibly he is just going to try and go home. It's just going to take him a while, damn it. Also, you can go over there all you want. There's literally no one for you to try for heresy. Aha, okay. I think it's take two of the Adana War. Also, they're going to slowly shove my spy more and more out of the way, which is hilarious. Yep, I think they're going for Adana. Like, you know, again. They've reunified. Now they've decided Adana is the target. <laughs> so, Adana now actually does have the... Well, it's a castle, isn't it? It's not a fortress yet. And, uh, yeah, with Steve Stenger, Steve the Charismatic Dead... Sadly, very, very sadly, we're not going to be able to make it into a fortress in time. By the time they get there, it'll be too late. So, hmm. We may have to... I'm willing to fight a little bit at a castle. I'll just commit some fairly unremarkable Norse archers. Because we can absolutely start bleeding them dry a little bit. We won't win. We'll lose Adana, unquestionably. But it'll still probably just about work out for me. Speaking of which, what else have we got going on here? Probably that's just Angus once again. Yep, Angus, and indeed sad. I think that's the second time that poor guy's got the plague. He's just a sickly, sickly guy. Cardinal report, and okay. French cardinal goes down, Venetian cardinal comes in. Very, very nice indeed. Papal states very much like us. Sicily has attacked the Turks. For what possible reason would Sicily have attacked the Turks? Like, what do the Turks own that Sicily could possibly flipping want? Are they putting that... That port's not under siege. Okay, what are the ports of the Turks have? They've got... There's a port here. That's... Hang on. That's not under siege. Um... That's... That's it. How did you declare war? That's the bigger question. <laughs> I've literally no clue how they've declared war unless they've got, like, an army... No, like, there's not much left of the Turkish force at this point. There's Kaisaria which doesn't have a port. There's Trebizond, which runs all the way along northern Turkey, which has a port that's not under siege because it tells you when it's under siege. That place isn't under siege. I can see these two cities. The Sicilians are probably not over here, to be honest. So how did you just declare war? I've no clue. Well, that's just a flipping mystery. Ah, uh, yes, that reminds me. One thing we do need to do. Also, ooh, Helsinki, finally! Helsinki's finally ready to be a small city. Bloody finally. We need to figure out the succession. That needs to be the last thing we do today. It's the succession figuring out. Because I'm not convinced that uh, Steve Scapti, Steve the Younger, is quite the man we need leading the Empire. No. No, unfortunately not. Right. Let's go over to the family tree here. So, right now, yeah, King Gustav the Crusader is indeed the faction leader. Now, as a result, his... Ah, I see. So that's actually his brother, the other son or adopted person, of King Steve. 
But if this guy dies, then who does it move over to? I don't know. And honestly, right now, with the Mongols coming in, we're not in a position to be turning down General's units. So uh, I've got a plan, which is, Scapti, I've got a really nice new place for you to live. It's called Adana. It's up north, and we believe it's 100% absolutely totally safe. So next turn, we'll move him. <laughs> we'll move him over to Adana. And that will be absolutely 100% A-OK. -okay. Speaking of Adana, it can have a practice range so we can actually start producing Norse archers there. And yep, I'm sure he will do a magnificent job and have a long and successful life in Adana. And everything will be OK. It'll be him in a castle with a practice range, just pumping out Norse archers. And that will presumably be the first fight that we actually fight against the Mongols. Beyond that, well, there's a bridge north of Antioch. We could attempt a bridge battle. Again, we'll lose because they've got long-range archers. But with it being a paved road, it'll be a long bridge. So we will at least have a chance. Again, we can do a lot of damage. Maybe even defeat a stack or two before they manage to wear us down. And after that, well, they've only got three targets. Damascus, in which case, don't care. Aleppo, which is on its way to becoming a citadel in three turns. Acre already a citadel and already has flipping ballista towers as well. So that to me works very nice. And yeah, as soon as this place is a citadel, we'll also agree to have ballista towers. So double citadel with ballistas together with a backup Gaza citadel with ballistas in case they manage to break through those and sack Jerusalem, though Jerusalem would be a formality at that point. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we have indeed technically won the long campaign, but the real fight is only just about to begin. <laughs> Because the Mongols are coming. They've reunified and I think they actually mean it this time. So I would say coming up over the next part or two, we will indeed have our first confrontation with the Mongols. We need to start pumping some more troops out of Gaza, positioning ourselves ready to hold out in Adana and start bleeding them. Bleed them some more at the bridge over Antioch. Sadly, watch Antioch being lost, though we won't let them have it for free, damn it. I will put something there that lets them at least have a bit of a fighting chance of taking some of the bastards with them. And then after that... Aleppo and Acre stand in the way and that's going to be one hell of a fight. Like, you saw how tough the flipping citadels were when I had to go and take Angers. It's going to be like that, except I'm going to be on the defence and I'm going to actually have a proper well-trained army. But they've got 12 full stacks. I love the hordes in Medieval 2. They're absolutely magnificent. So, that is coming up very, very soon indeed, ladies and gentlemen. But in the meantime, I've been John. This has been many a true nerd. And this has been Medieval 2 Total War. Thank you very much and goodbye. Oh no! Oh dear! America's decided they do not like us! Just want to finish off China, I can die happily. Well, not happily because there's nuclear fire involved, but moderately happily. There we go! I've just started... Oh god. The Earth was fun, wasn't it? We can all agree, the Earth was great. <laughs>